Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rano and in today's video I get to talk to you about the T-72BU which is an absolute monster and it is the pinnacle of the Soviet heavy tanks in the Cold War game mode. This is an Era 3 Soviet heavy tank for the Eastern Alliance and if you didn't know Era 3 is otherwise known as the Detente mode for those of you that are maybe a newer player to the game or haven't played Cold War that much. So in today's video I'm going to be telling you all about this very mobile, this fantastic uh, user-friendly heavy tank. I'm going to be comparing it to other um, counterparts in today's video as well as comparing the DPMs of all heavy tanks in era 3 of the Cold War game mode to see where the T-72BU lies. I'm going to show you my commander and equipment setup should you wish to play the tank as I have done in the two gameplays that end this video that hopefully demonstrate how to play this tank to get results that you will be proud of and I'm also going to show you the armor profile of the T-72BU and hopefully point out a couple of the weak spots if you are having trouble taking these things out efficiently on the battlefield so we're going to head over here to this excel spreadsheet where I have put all the stats of the T-72BU in in this particular comparison, I'm going to be comparing it to the Type 92, the Makava Mark IIb and the Makava Mark III. Of course, there are other Era 3 heavy tanks to compare this tank to, but I've compared to these three tanks because I think they fit the playstyle better of the T-72BU, a fast-paced fast kind of brawling heavy tank. Uh, there's 80 GMs that we can compare, um, and also I think uh, in terms of the Type 92, they are slightly sort of smaller, uh, flatter, lower a profile tank so it's a little bit of a better comparison to the hull down heavy tanks like the Leopard 2A5, the Challenger 2 and the M1A2 Abrams. So first off we're going to tell you all of the stats of the T-72BU and then I'm going to compare the stats and see how this holds up to the other heavy tanks. If you haven't seen one of my reviews before then the red is the worst in the comparison, the green is the best statistic and the orange is somewhere in between and the highlighted yellow ones are the updated stats with my commander and equipment setup applied and I'll be telling you what that is in just a little bit but first off we're going to talk about the hit points and as you can see here it is red it's the worst in this comparison joint worst with the type 92 3950 hit points that's still nothing to sniff at it's only 200 worse than the Makar the Mark III which is the best in this comparison and it's not too much of an issue at all that's plenty of hit points to brawl it out take multiple rounds and keeping the battle for as long as possible and it has very usable armor as well so you will be bouncing a lot of shells as well and in terms of the view range again it's joint worst in the comparison with the type 92 at 495 meters of view range but it kind of doesn't really matter on this tank because of the true vision system because you're a sort of fast paced brawling heavy tank you're going to want to be getting to the hotspot areas on the maps ruling it out with the other medium and heavy tanks and you're um, not going to worry too much about playing a scouting role when you're getting so far forward you're going to be able to spot with this kind of view range anyway so I wouldn't worry about that too much at all so now we're going to get on to the mobility and don't worry because there is a lot of red and orange on the T-72BU it's still a very highly mobile tank it's just not quite as mobile as the other ones in this comparison and I'll tell you what that is now so in terms of the engine power on the T-72BU it's one 1130 horsepower slightly lacking in comparison to the other tanks in this comparison um, and especially in comparison to the Makar the Mark III as you can see that has a fantastic horsepower of 1500. The T-72BU has a power to rate ratio of 24.26, a top forward speed of 67.6 km an hour, top reverse speed of 23 km an hour, a hull traverse of 38 degrees a second and a turret traverse of 36 degrees a second. One thing to note is the terrible reverse speed on the T-72BU. Sometimes it's just much easier to turn all the way around uh, and I'll just get out of harm's way by going forwards because reversing out of harm's way is going to take you too long and you're going to be tracked and sort of taken out and that kind of thing and it powers in comparison to the Makava uh, Mark III and it's much much worse than things like the Challenger 2 or the M1A2 Abrams that can go backwards nearly as fast as they can forwards or maybe even as fast I haven't played them just yet so that's something to watch out for especially when you're trying to reverse out of a heavier tank's way in terms of physical weight because they will ram you and they'll do a lot of damage so um, you're going to want to try and do 
everything you can to improve your mobility if you can and if you choose to use the mobility equipment and I'll tell you what I choose in just a little bit to improve my traverse speeds on this tank but overall it's still a very mobile tank you're going to keep up with the flow of the battle but just do bear in mind that you are slightly uh, slower in, unless you use the mobility equipment than other heavy tanks in era 3 of cold war so you're going to want to watch out for getting rammed by a physically larger tank um, in terms of the gun then, and this of course is one of the most important aspects of any tank, the T-72BU has a 125mm gun that fires APF, SDS as standard and premium, and it also has ATGMs as its third ammunition choice. You can use a gun package that fires APF, SDS as standard and premium and has a heat round as your third ammunition choice. It's just up to you whether you want to carry rounds of ATGMs instead of rounds of heat rounds. I much prefer the ATGM package, which is why I'm including it in today's video, because I think it's much more competitive and the ATGMs can come in clutch when you are getting a shot off at the start of the battle or ambushing an enemy on quite a lot of hit points at the end of the game to take them down. So the T-72B use 125mm gun. On the standard round you have 1700 meters a second shell velocity on both of your APF SDS rounds. Penetration is absolutely fantastic. It's 606 millimeters on your standard penetration on your APF SDS rounds, which means it's going to be very user friendly if you um, are not too great at leading your targets or uh, aiming for weak points or that kind of thing. It's going to be more forgiving for a newer player, and this is one of the lines I highly recommend going down. If you are a newer player to Cold War, and if you choose to use your premium APF SDS round, it jumps up to 697 millimeters of penetration, which is fantastic. And highlighted in green, it is the best in this comparison. And in terms of the third ammunition choice in this comparison, it's the ATGMs on the T-72BU. They have a surprisingly good shell velocity at 350 meters a second, 750 uh, millimeters of penetration, which is absolutely fantastic, and 1200 um, alpha damage, which is more than double your standard alpha damage on your 125 millimeter gun. So if you can ambush an enemy at the start, or you know you're going to be moving for a certain amount of time, load up an ATGM and surprise your next enemy. Uh, they might be thinking you're going to be firing just a standard round, and they're going to be shocked when they lose uh, twice as much health or over twice as much health as uh, they suspected. Um, in terms of the comparison, then with this gun. And and the other tanks in this comparison um, the shell velocity is the best um, in this comparison or uh, joint best basically with the type 92 at 1700 meters a second the shell velocity on the premium rounds is somewhere in between um, the best is 1740 meters a second on the type 92 but there's not too much of a distance so a difference between those two the shell velocity is fantastic it's great for leading at mid to long ranges and you don't have to give too much lead at all to be able to hit your opponents and in terms of the ATGMs, the shell velocity is the best in class compared to the Macavas. Uh, the penetration is only 50 worse than the Macava Mark III. Fantastic penetration on the ATGMs, and the alpha damage of 1200 is the best in this comparison. So, fantastic thumbs up in terms of the gun on the T72BU. Um, it is a very good gun that chunks your opponents down, and you have a fantastic range of ammunition to choose from. In terms of the gun handling then, you can see that there is quite a lot of red and orange in this comparison. It's not the absolute um, best, it's not the absolute worst, it kind of is somewhere in between. So in terms of its aim time at 2.1 seconds, it's the worst in this comparison. The accuracy is 0.24, which isn't quite as bad as the 0.25 on the Type 92. The DPM is the worst in this comparison at 4174.5. Your base reload is 7.9 seconds. You can carry 45 rounds of ammunition. And bear in mind, if you choose to fire the ATGMs, you are able to carry, uh, if I can just check for you, just to make sure I've got this right, you can carry six ATGMs with the ATGM package. And it's just up to you how many you carry or whether you choose the package that can fire the heat rounds as well. And in terms of its gun depression, it's the worst in this comparison at six degrees. So not that very good on um, ridge lines although you can make it work basically because it's so low profile you can make it work on the sort of medium ridges or small ridges get up close and personal brawl it out side scrape uh, wiggle your armor and you should be golden but do bear in mind that there are a lot of ridge lines where you cannot 
uh, use your gun where things like the Challenger 2, the Abrams, the Leopard or the Macavas will be able to use. And in terms of the gun elevation, 14 degrees of elevation isn't fantastic. Bear in mind when you're going down the slope and you're trying to shoot up at things, that might be a little bit of an issue. But apart from that, uh, the gun's fantastic and you can get the gun handling down to a very good uh, point indeed, especially the DPM as you can see with my commander and equipment set up. It shot up to 5,489 and I'll talk you through that in just a second. Um, in terms of the best in this comparison, you can see the gun handling is all green on the Macarthur Mark IIb. It has the better aim time accuracy, it has the best DPM in this comparison, it carries the most runs of ammunition, best gun depression and best elevation. Um, but I'd say this, it, this kind of has better all round um, capabilities for a newer player. It's very user friendly and we'll talk about the armour in just a second. But first I'm going to tell you about my commander and equipment setup and the one that I run on the T72BU. So in terms of my equipment, I run advanced loader, improved ventilation and traction system. And on my commander, I run sixth sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, run and gun, armor angling and track mechanic. So in terms of my equipment, I run the advanced loader to improve my DPM. I run the improved ventilation to improve everything about my tank from my gun handling uh, to my DPM to my view range and everything about that. And my traction system I run to improve my top forwards and backwards reverse speed because the um, backwards reverse speed isn't that great. And I also run it to improve my traverse speeds. Um, and as you can see here, it's improved my power, uh, power to weight. It's improved my top forward speed. I should say from from 67.6 kilometers an hour to 74.36. It's improved my reverse speed from 23 to 25.3 kilometers an hour. And my traverse speeds have improved to 41.8 degrees a second on the hull and 42.15 degrees a second on the turret, which means it's much, much better at keeping its arm around to tanks that are trying to circle it or trying to ram it and that kind of thing. Um, it's uh, I found this works really well for me, this setup, and hopefully it works really well for you. And with this setup, I have uh, you can now see that my aim time has improved to 1.97 seconds. My accuracy is Accuracy is now 0.2, which is absolutely fantastic. My DPM has shot up to 5,489, and my reload is now about 6 seconds, 6.01 uh, seconds on the 125mm gun to fire that 550 alpha damage. So fantastic, really. And in terms of my commander, um, you could take out something like armor wrangling for a different perk to help the mobility a little bit more. Um, it would mean that you would take a slightly more damage due to the armor angling um, commander skill. Um, but I found that this works really well for me. It's kind of a very standard heavy tank setup. The track mechanic can come in useful when you're side scraping or get tracked out in the open. Um, gun handling skills, rapid loading for your DPM. And I found that, yeah, it works really well and give it a try. You can always tweak it and try different things and let me know what you use. And in terms of the consumables, I run the uh, large repair kit, I run the large med kit, and I also run the enhanced whole patch kit, which restores 5% of your tank HP over 20 seconds and gives you a passive boost of minus 5% chance of mortal damage throughout the battle. So that's it for the stats of the T-72BU. We're going to jump on now into the armor viewer in the garage, have a look at the armor layout of the T-72BU. And then we're going to get stuck into the gameplay to see how this thing performs. So you're joining me here in the armor viewer in the garage having a look at the T-72BU and its armor layout. Bear in mind that there's a lot of uh, different composite armor on here to protect from ATGMs. I'm going to show you the main parts uh, that protect and hopefully you'll be able to pick up a few weak spots as we go along. It's very hard with the armor view to find an effective armor angling value of the T-72BU and any tank in Water Tanks console because it doesn't have an effective armor um, viewer where it takes into account the angling etc like tanks.gg has but I'm going to do my best to try and show you some weak spots of the T-72BU in particular ones that I found. So the toughest part of the armor here is 540 millimeters. that's around the gun here on the mantlet that's a very thick part of the armor and it's also covered obviously by the gun and directly to the left and right there is 
composite armour, so that's a very hard spot to penetrate indeed. The front left and the front right of the turret is 430mm of base armour on the sides of the turret and they are angled so if you're shooting at the turret from the side make sure it's trying to get the flattest point like there or the flattest point like that if you're angling at the turret like this you're going to be going through composite armour and hitting a curved angled surface so you're more likely to ricochet. Um, there are pipe points here on the top of the turret here, 225mm, that if you're above it you can shoot down onto the turret and penetrate. Um, these are a harder thing to hit, obviously if it's using its gun depression or its very minimal gun depression I should say, um, you're more likely just to be bouncing off of the top of the turret, it'll be an auto ricochet angle. Um, you can see here that there's the, the log, which is 220mm somehow. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but we'll just uh, pretend we didn't see that. Uh, the upper plate is very well angled, as you can see, and it's 175mm of base armour, and there is lots of composite armour over the front of this, so this isn't a great place to shoot. If you are trying to penetrate um, a heat round or an HE or an ATGM because it will get absorbed by the composite armour, um, the angling when you're moving can give some auto ricochet angle. So when you're moving out in the open, just wiggle like this, zigzag, go in figures uh, of eight or that kind of thing, and hopefully you'll give uh, a auto ricochet angle for your opponents to hit or they'll just hit your side armour and your shot will be absorbed by the tracks or something like that. If you're taller than it of course you can go through this no problem with the penetration in era 3 of Cold War um, but do bear in mind ATGMs will struggle to go through the front of this and if you're face hugging it and you're in something with decent penetration just shoot down on the hole you should be golden to go through that. You can see here that there is a couple of 150 um, millimeters thick um, if you are shooting um, sort of from a level angle or you're above it, that's a good weak spot on the turret to hit and it does stick out even if it's using its gun depression. So bear in mind you can shoot that as well and that bit isn't protected by composite armour so that can be penetrated um, from different angles by ATGM so that is something to bear in mind. Uh, you have a back of the turret here behind some of the spaced armour at 140mm. The lower plate or the top part of the lower plate as you can see that it's 120 millimeter of banded armor um, we'll just go through now there's extra spaced armor on the sides of the turret or the the flat part of the turret there of spaced armor of 90 millimeters so you can see there are layers upon layers it's very hard to tell the front portion of the hull is 90 millimeters on the sides um, and the back portion is 70 uh, millimeter so you can side scrape against uh, quite a few rounds but do bear in mind if you over angle you will be uh, penetrated but you can catch ATGMs and heat rounds if you're side scraping and absorb them with the composite armor over the top of the upper plate there is some spaced armor so that will protect you against the ATGMs and heat as we have already discussed the gun itself is 55 millimeters thick and there is some spaced armor on the top of the turret but if you're shooting down on it you should be able to penetrate no problem um, just overmatch the top with the caliber of guns that are in cold war there's some spaced armor on the rear of the tank but you should still be able to penetrate high uh, penetration atgms through the rear that shouldn't be a problem now we're starting to get onto the brick-like patterns of some of the uh, composite armor that protect against ATGMs. You can see there is a little bit on the cupola, so if you're shooting down on the cupola or from the sides and rear, you should be able to penetrate. But going through the front, um, if it's a lower penetration ATGM, it might suffer and it might uh, absorb heat rounds as well if you're very unlucky. There's side skirt um, armor here, spaced armor on the sides of the tracks of 25 millimeters. The tracks themselves are 20 millimeters. And now you have all of this composite of the ERA armor over the front of the hull, the front left and right of the tracks, front left and right of the turret, and on top of the turret to project you against uh, ATGM. So bear in mind that these are bad points to shoot the tank if you're trying to penetrate ATGMs because you will get reduced damage or no damage at all. And there's some extra 10 millimeter bits of the composite armor over the front and sides of the tracks and turret as well. And there's the 6mm blocks all over the back of the turret, so that's not an easy penetration with ATGMs as well. Uh, just bear in mind that you can shoot under it and you should be okay to go through that. But I would say one of the best places to shoot with the ATGMs if you're going for this tank can be the uh, sort of front left and front right of the turret, those yellow parts there that are 
um, 430 millimeters. You can penetrate this with higher penetration ATGMs if you're shooting a flat surface like from the side here, from here, or you're shooting the part nearest the mantlet as long as you don't hit the mantlet and you go underneath that spaced armor. Um, if you're also trying to shoot um, this tank with ATGMs, you could obviously go for the uh, 120 millimeter bar here, the lower part of the lower plate because it's projected by less composite armor that can be penetrated by ATGMs. But when this thing's wiggling, uh, moving backwards and forwards, it can be a hard shot to hit. Other than that, just go for the rear of this tank or shoot onto the engine deck, and you should penetrate it or from the sides and rear of the cupola and that's pretty much all you can say about the armor of this tank it's uh very forgiving i wouldn't say it's always reliable i wouldn't sit out in front of opponents because a lot of tanks are taller than you they can just shoot down on you but when you're moving fast in the open if you wiggle there's lots of different plates of armor to catch and absorb and ricochet rounds and it's a very forgiving tank for new players you don't have to think too much when you're playing this just go in use your gun use your fantastic penetration use your atgms and blast your way through your opponents so that's it for the armor viewer of the t72 bu We'll head over to the gameplay now, we'll look at the first game and see how this tank performs. So you're joining me here on Mannheim in the T-72BU and for these two replays I am fully upgraded and I'm using the gun package that fires ATGMs as its third ammunition choice. Like I said in the review part of today's video, the other gun package that you can use has heat as its third ammunition choice and uh, I've mentioned a lot during today's video that this tank is just very user friendly it's a great tank to go towards if you are a newer player or new to Cold War and the reason for that is because it's a mix of fantastic attributes or a mix of good attributes I should say there are fantastic elements about this tank um, but there are a number of good attributes that are not the best not the worst just something in between and it comes in this fantastic very small profile package that's very efficient uh, you have very very good penetration on your standard rounds decent penetration on your premium rounds you have the option to fire heat or ATGMs as your third ammunition choice and the ATGMs have fantastic penetration great alpha damage and good shell velocity for ATGMs you have very decent all-round armor it's very mobile it's small profile like I say so it's very maneuverable once you have set it up with uh, mobility equipment should you wish to uh, use the traction system like I have or the advanced powertrain or both the gun handling's fine and even though the DPM is towards the lower end of all tanks in Cold War Era 3 or all heavy tanks of Cold War Era 3 um, which I will show you now actually on screen a list of the DPMs of all heavy tanks in Cold War Era 3 you can see that it's the fourth worst uh, with the best being the Challenger 1 using its uh, premium rounds at 4713 DPM uh, and the T72BU on 4174.5 DPM um, so 600 DPM difference but you do get that great standard penetration you get good premium penetration good all-round armor and it's just a good little uh, small profile heavy tank package or main battle tank package that's very efficient and it's uh, user friendly because you don't have to play a certain play style you don't have to go hold down like in an Abrams or a Challenger 2 um, you don't have to play a certain play style you can sort of go around the map do your own thing very fast um, it's got very troll armor indeed it bounces shells that have no right to bounce sometimes and it does have all of that composite explosive reactive armor to protect you from ATGM so I highly recommend going down this line it's a great tank and uh, as you can see here I'm just brawling it out with other tanks whilst I am reloading I'm continuously moving left to right sort of from one 45 degree angle to another um, I'm trying to use hard cover side scraping off of it um, I'm going with the flow of the battle and I'm supporting all of my other heavy tanks this thing in a swarm is absolutely insane even with the slightly lower DPM than other heavy tanks in era 3 it's still um, um, a very dangerous tank to come up against you just have to be very careful when you come up against a good player in a tank that has great dpm that knows where to shoot because you can get taken out very quickly um, but yeah if you're playing this thing in packs it can be very good in a platoon that kind of thing and i highly recommend going up this line as one of your first cold war lines it's a very enjoyable line nothing too uh, strenuous just a very enjoyable line so here on Mannheim, you've seen that i've been rolling it out um sort of i didn't have to go too far from the spawn and we come to that hill where all of the tanks like to go up at the start of the battle and now i'm just bullying tanks like this type 88a 
putting shots in on the move with the improved gun handling and uh, tracking him, ramming him using the weight of this tank and that's something that you can do against medium tanks and light tanks and even their lighter heavy tanks you go full speed into them, ram them at the end of the battle pick up some extra damage and you can see that this thing once it gets going it absolutely annihilates its opponents as I've been waffling on in the first four minutes of this battle we're already just shy of 7k direct damage and just shy of 1300 assistance there's still five tanks left on the enemy team and I'm just going for it I'm going after this challenger 2 which should be able to take me out in a one-on-one -on -one. but sometimes you can make them panic just by wiggling going up in front of them um, one of the best things to do in the T72 BU is just go alongside a tank and sort of face hug it from the side because wasn't they shooting at you because you're so low profile the chances are they're going to shoot into your turret and bounce off or they will just shoot over the top of you and that's hilarious to do that's something that you can do obviously in cold war game mode and in world war 2 with smaller profile tanks you just go up alongside a tank give it the old christian side hug uh, go up and down and hopefully they will ricochet off you we're trying to get a ram in on this uh light tank unfortunately we were kind of battling for a position there with our enemy uh, our friendly heavy tank i should say but it doesn't really matter i'm just going to go in now for some extra damage at the end of the game we ram track that uh, challenger 2 and we managed to get the king blow on him that takes our damage total over 10k and a very quick round indeed for the t72 bu where we finished in the mvp slot with four kills 10.5k direct damage the mastery badge there 1590 base experience 10.5k direct damage 2.3k assistance and yeah we make a little bit of a silver profit even though we did fire quite a few uh, premium rounds as well during that game so that's it for the first game we're going to head on now into the second one and i'll talk you through what i'm doing in that one so we're now into the second replay of today's video and this will be the final replay of the video we are here on great wall in the t72 bu and we're going to have a fantastic game that perfectly demonstrates how good this tank is how user friendly it is and how you don't really have to take this thing way too seriously to have a good result so at the start of the battle i'm loading up an atgm I'm going to head towards the F5 location on the map, towards that central location where all of the heavy tanks like to brawl. I'm coming this direction just in the hope that I surprise some of the tanks coming in from the sort of zero line. I surprise them in the side, but unfortunately we do get spotted by this MA AGS as he comes up. Uh, we lead our ATGM there, up there, and <laughs> deal 1204 damage to a light tank at the start of the battle, which, yeah, I'm pretty happy about. That's a very good thing to do at the start of the battle, to get uh, damage out on a light tank and reduce their vision for later in the battle. Then we get a shot blind through the smoke on this Leopard 2. Uh, we wiggle... Um, we're trying to bounce his rounds. I'm trying to keep him tracked, ramming him to keep his tracks off, and we're just trying to wiggle, go forwards and backwards, and hope that he bounces off of us. There's a very good chance that he um, will penetrate us with his good penetration, and he looks like a player that knows where to shoot. But within quick succession, by us tracking him, keeping us in place, we have some teammate support, and we take him out. And you notice that I'm always going for tracks on tanks, especially ones that are on ridge lines above me or below me. I'm trying to keep them in place for my teammates and get that lovely juicy assistance and it also keeps them in place so that they can outmaneuver me they can't come in for the ram and deal damage to me that way we're helping out our light tank um, by taking putting shots into this t72 bu on the enemy team whilst he is circling that t72 bu unfortunately we bounced the killing blow and i was really hoping that that wouldn't be um the end of our friendly light tank we bounce a second killing blow uh, trying to go through the upper plate there on the t72 bu and that just shows how troll the armor is on this thing um he just angled enough there down that slope for me to bounce off his upper hole if i loaded pre him that would have gone through unfortunately for us we didn't help our light tank out in time so hopefully we're going to avenge his death make it worthwhile and uh, take this one down for our team but you can see by tracking by being aggressive and being forwards at the start of the battle we've pushed our damage uh, assistance damage i should say up to 5.2k at the start of the battle and we're already up to uh, 3.9k direct damage and we're just going to go hopefully from strength for strength in this battle go for the tracks there and that type 85 to um to keep him in place and now we're just going to put round after round into his side we'll hold down here should he swing round and try and snapshot us so hopefully 
hopefully his round would bounce off because he's looking up at us as well. This is the perfect kind of position to be in. This is a ridge line where you can use your pretty poor gun depression on this tank. And uh, yeah, within seconds, that Type 85 2M was taken out and we're going to move on. It's still very even. It's 11 tanks uh, versus 11 tanks. We're already over 10k um, combined. And now we're just going to go in for the kill on these tanks below us. And we use the mobility that we have uh, boosted up with our uh, traction system our traverse speed check you can see here when he's firing we are trying to avoid his shells uh, just by wiggling going from left to right and he's already missed two shells into us and we are putting every round into him it's just my premium rounds left so auto aiming at this kind of range the gun handling will work for you i always recommend aiming but when you're moving around and you don't feel like you can free aim then obviously you can auto aim and it should work especially if you're using the fantastic penetration that this tank has i was using the hard cover off that rock to my left to avoid shells further down towards the sort of uh k1 location and now i'm backing up to this rock to avoid taking shells from behind me and we're putting round after round into these tanks it looks like we are capturing their base which obviously is uh, bringing all of these tanks here and we're just trying to survive for as long as possible unfortunately we get taken out by uh, the enemy MAAGS as he was circling around but we kept in that battle for a long time um, that was a very quick round indeed for the T72BU where we picked up a very good amount of damage we're going to head towards the end of the battle we are outnumbered by three tanks at the moment and we're going to see if this one was taken down by the rest of my team so unfortunately that one ended in a loss the remaining two tanks on our team were in a platoon but they couldn't take that one down nonetheless we finished with 949 base experience and we finished in the top spot on our team making just shy of a hundred thousand silver profit and we still fired quite a few premium rounds as we ran out of standard rounds in that game three kills 10.2k direct damage and 5.2k assistance we made um, a lot of damage in that game in six minutes and 27 seconds very fast paced game indeed and that suits a tank like this unfortunately this time it was a loss but with this tank um, it's a very very powerful tank indeed it's fantastic when you support your teammates in a platoon and you should have a good win rate if you're playing this thing um, as it's intended as a very uh, sort of good brawling tank very good all-rounder like I said very user-friendly and I highly recommend this very powerful tank so hopefully this review has been enjoyable and or informative and until next time I will see you on the battlefield and bye for now